Hey everyone, welcome back to another Logic Pro how-to video. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use automation in Logic Pro. So let's go over where to find automation. Uh, specifically, I want to talk a little bit about these functions. So if you've come to the inspector window and we go down here to look at read, touch, latch, write, let's go through each of these ones and talk about um, what they mean to automation. And then let's talk about some popular types of automation you can do, specifically an EQ automation, a volume automation, pan automation and a reverb automation. So these are popular types of automation that you can do in, in your music productions. So it's not only in this video, I want to teach you like what automation is, it's like how to actually use it in your productions as well. So firstly, where is automation? In Logic, you press A on your keyboard and that's gonna open up the automation view of all the tracks. So if, if you've accidentally pressed A before, you, you may have gotten here. And um, by default, every track will be on this drop down here, it will be read. And you typically want to have it at read all the time and you'll learn why in a little bit. So when you press A, you now have the ability to automate things. So a little bit of a kind of back information, if this is a step too far ahead of you right now, automation is the ability to automate certain tasks inside of Logic. So for example, your drums get louder over time or your electric guitar here the reverb gets more wet over time so it sounds bigger over time and notice how i'm saying over time it's as the song progresses you automate things so i'm going to show you how this is done in practice let's take a, a look first at doing everything in read mode you can just make sure this drop down here if you want to follow make sure this is in read so in read mode, it does take a little bit longer because you have to do everything from scratch. So what I wanna do in this section here, so we're gonna focus on the drums. Okay. So I want to do some type of automation where it actually does a EQ automation. So I want to make it sound like the drums are rising up over time, like kind of like coming out of water. How we're gonna do that is actually add an EQ. And you can see I've done it here. I'm gonna do it from scratch again. So we're gonna to need to add an EQ by pressing this square. Now we can just close that down if we want or we can just have it here. Actually, let's have it there so you can see it in action. Click on the track you wanna automate, go to this drop down, and find the specific parameter you wanna automate. In this case, we wanna automate a high kind of frequency. Notice this stuff here, one, two, three. That's respective to the plugins on the side here. One, two, three. I have a UAD plugin. It's a paid compressor plugin. This is a Sound Toys kind of saturation compressor plugin. And this is a channel EQ here. I'm gonna show you a little trick here though. If you, what you should put on in Logic is under mix, this one here, auto select automation parameter in read mode. So I have that checked, because it's likely not checked because it's not by default. And I'm gonna show you what happens here. When this is on, you can go to any plugin in Logic and click in the plugin, the thing you wanna automate. In this case, I wanna automate this high cut frequency. So watch when I click on this, notice here how it says high cut frequency. That's because I just clicked on it here. If I wanna do a low cut frequency, it goes low cut frequency. So this, if you have that on in Mix, then you don't have to go searching for it. So that's a little trick there. Okay, now that I have this clicked, now this means that we can click in here and it's gonna generate our automation line. All automation looks like a line and the line is different based on what value you have here. Quickly, for example, if I just go down quickly to this track and click in, now I'm affecting the volume. I can automate the volume. More on that in a little bit. So we want the drums to come out from the water, right? So we're gonna have to go down. See how I notice when I pull down on this, it's going to also pull down on the EQ. So I can click a dot at the beginning and a dot at the end and I can raise this up over time and watch how this will sound. So that's essentially how to do an EQ. Now you can design it maybe a little bit better from a production perspective. So I would use a curve tool in my tools and curve this a little bit and just find the sweet spot of the sound. Then it's more of a subjective production thing here, finding the actual like feeling and sound of the automation, but that's how to do the automation. 
Now let's do a reverb automation. So let's go down to our electric guitar here and just have a listen to it. So let's play with automating the reverb over time. So again, um, we have the plugin there, so we don't need to add the reverb plugin because it's already here. And since I have this picked, I can just open the plugin click what I want to automate. In this case, I want to automate the mix. So it means it's going to sound more wet over time. If I just click mix, notice how it's now in the dropdown. Now click inside the track and it's going to generate the mix knob. Watch, look at the mix on the plugin. Here's another little trick. If you add the marquee tool in Logic here and you make a little square, a marquee square, and let go, then click in it now creates two dots in the end for you. So it's, it's just a bit faster to, instead of making four dots yourself because now I can essentially make a shape here and not affect anything after this section. For example, if I just want the pre-chorus to sound like the guitar is getting a bit more wet over time, but then come back in on the chorus. So this is what this would sound like. So you can see how, it, how how much dynamic you can get when you automate things in your tracks to make things sound like they're moving, coming back in the mix and, and coming forward in the mix to making it sound much more pro. This is where automation comes in. Like anything, we can go back to the curve tool. We can make a curve and then you want to find the sweet spot, the, the taste of the automation. Okay, let's move on to volume automation. So by default, volume is there by default in the dropdown. So you just have to click anywhere. So if I just click, you know, this one, it will give me a volume. And I can just command Z that to get rid of that. I can do the marquee tool or I can just click lines in. You know, I, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter if you want to. You see how detailed you can get with volume or not only volume, but any automation. You can draw these, these shapes, you know. I mean, that would be kind of a ridiculous automation, but watch how easy it is to erase. Click and drag to the right. Or I can right click here and delete visible automation then start over. So typically you maybe want it just to slow down over time or to increase a little bit and we can curve it like that. You can have multiple types of automation on one track. If we want to go and also add an EQ automation like we did there on the, on the drums, we can go press the EQ. We can click in again on what we want to automate. See how it says high kind of frequency now. Click in, make some dots, and draw the shape of, of the automation. Now we're doing a volume automation increase up over time and an EQ automation. And you can see, you can see the volume automation line behind this EQ. There's two lines in there. One, the volume's very shaded. I can go down here and see used automation volume and channel EQ. Then I can delete the visible automation or delete all the automation on the track. Let's look at another type of automation using a pan type of automation, which is in the popular automations drop down here. I've, I've highlighted here for you, but you can see under volume, if you don't have any plugins, then it's going to look, you're only going to see smart controls volume and main. So under main, volume, pan, solo, mute, these type of things are there because they're main things to automate. So we can automate the panning of the track, which is a cool production thing. So if you click in, now watch the, the pan knob over here, this plus 14. All the way down is to the right and all the way up just to the left. So you could start the beginning of the track on the left side and then over time it eventually like goes through the speakers to the right side which is a cool production thing. Listen to this. It's like coming across the back of your head onto the right side. Or if you could get more creative, you could go down up really fast and make shapes like this. I like doing this with toms too, to have like toms kind of roll across a little bit. See, this is kind of like 
So this is the manual way to do this with panning automation. There are also plugins that can do this type of thing for you, but it's nice to know that you can have this in your back pocket. Okay, so those are four different types of automation on how to use automation in Logic. Let's look at now other than read mode. So touch mode. So read mode is you just draw it yourself. Think of read mode as like you're drawing the automation yourself like we did here with these. Touch mode is actually, think of touch and latch is basically the same thing. There's one small difference, which I'll explain now. So touch and latch are the same thing with respect to when you have it on touch or latch, it's going to program and automate that thing in real time. So I'll do it with panning. I'll do it. I'm going to erase the panning one we have here and I'm going to redo it, but I'm going to do it in real time, but I'm actually using my mouse. So I'm going to press play at bar 13. And when it hits my little region here, I'm going to automate with my mouse and it's going to program that in for me. And there you go, it's in there. And notice how many dots it made for us. We can now go in and edit those dots if we want. So that's latch. With touch, it's the exact same thing, but with touch, it will bounce back to the starting point it was at. So, for example, if I just delete that and go to touch, and let's say I'm on I'm on zero, right? What touch is gonna do when I finish the automation, it's just gonna go back to zero. It's gonna make sure we go back to zero panning. So if I just do that automation, I just press play and program it in with my mouse. See, watch when I end, maybe I'm gonna end all the way left and let go. It bounces back to zero here. So touch is, is saying like, may, just make sure you go back to the original position because I just only wanna automate this specific section. Whereas latch, if I just continue on this automation, latch is just gonna leave it where you left it off. So I'm automating this now. And I'm gonna let go and just left it there. So that's the only difference between touch and latch. And you can do the touch and latch stuff really quickly more than read mode because you don't you don't even have to be in this view in, inside of A automation by pressing A, that's what I mean. For example, if we just delete this, we go back to read mode and press A, we're, in, we're now making our track here. If we were like producing our song and we're like, oh, I just wanna automate this guitar a little bit to the right. Well, all we have to do is go to this one you know, press touch, press play, automate it a bit, and press play, and then we're done. We don't even have to actually go in to press A and look at it, because we know that touched bounced it back to where it was, we know that's been automated, we can continue on. But the main important thing here is you go back to read, because if you don't, and you leave it on touch, and then down the line you're making a song, and you accidentally bump this volume, or you do something else, that's programmed in there now. So when you have it on touch and latch, that's turning on the, the live programming. The same thing goes for when you wanna do it with reverb or EQ or volume, you don't necessarily have to go in to this mode unless you wanna fine tune something. For example, the, that automation I did, maybe I just wanna go and fine tune it a little more and make a curve here, but using latch is a great way to get started doing that. Or I wanna completely start again and I just quickly do it in read mode. So it's a subjective thing on how you wanna go about it and more of a productivity thing. Next thing is write. Basically when you do it in write mode, it's gonna delete anything else that you've done in automation. So I never do it and I don't see the benefit of doing it in write mode uh, anyways. So if you do know the benefit of doing write mode, I don't know, please let us know in the comments but I, I don't re use write mode. I'm only using touch and latch most of the time. That's how to use automation in Logic Pro. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.